All right, guys, so this is Coach Simpson, and uh, this is my YouTube channel, but it looks different because I'm not in my basement in front of a whiteboard. Instead, I brought on a guy who's pretty smart. Uh, Coach Matheson and I had hooked up, and I'll let him introduce himself here in a second, and we're uh, going to do some things together. I love learning about football, and I like learning from guys that are similar to me, but sometimes smarter and do other things that I do, and Coach Matheson does that. Those of you who may not know me, Coach Simpson, I'm at Searcy High School, and I'm in off-season mode unlike the guy you're about to hear from. Yeah, I'm Coach Matheson, Adam Matheson. I'm at Mountain View High School out uh, in Vancouver, Washington. And uh, as Coach and I were just talking about, one, excited to have you here, join his YouTube channel. But uh, we are set to start football in Washington in March. And so uh, I'm kind of half in clinic world and, and half in gearing up for a season world. So uh, kind of different, but uh, exciting nonetheless. So looking forward to talking to you guys. Uh, sharing some stuff about formations and, and whatnot and uh, talk some football. Yep. And we're going to keep this one relatively brief because YouTube, you know, attention span is probably about 10, 15 minutes. So we're going to keep this one a little bit shorter, but we are going to come together December the 19th. Uh, for those of you who might be interested, and we're going to do an, uh, probably an hour, hour and a half long session. And I'll have information about that in the description here, uh, or you can reach out to either one of us through Twitter, email, whatever, and we can kind of let you know a little more, but we just want to give a quick preview of what we're doing. You know, back during quarantine, we got together and did split field offense. And I mean, I, I still go back and watch some of that stuff that coach put out. This one will be a little different. We're going to talk about using formations to get what you want. And I'm going to go at it. So I'll go first and let coach kind of talk about how he's going to go at it. And when I think of formations for me, I think about ways to get what I want. You know, when you're running a tight end wing, you really manipulate the defense and how many looks they can give you because you limit it. You know, they have to have kind of a certain look for what they want to do to stop you. Which is why I like to run the tight end wing a lot if I'm able to. Uh, but, you know, for me, moving to a new school, went to a different level of football and where you know, I needed to be able to manipulate people because I couldn't just bully ball. Them. Sometimes you can line up in tight end wing and just bully somebody. And sometimes that guy is a bigger bully than your guy is. And so you got to be able to figure out ways to do that. So I'm going to spend most of my time going through running buck sweep, but running it from lots of formations and lots of shifts. But uh, what I want to talk about today, I'm going to see if I can share my screen here, is uh, why you use formations. Because a lot of guys uh, will go through and they'll get into formations just to look smart. You know, I've coached against guys that have done that. And I've sometimes myself been guilty of that, of putting too much window dressing and not enough meat. So to me, if you're going to use formations, these are the questions you need to go through and ask, okay? Because there's a lot of different ways you can be successful at football. Some guys run one formation and multiple concepts. I'm the opposite. Few concepts, multiple formations. And so here's the questions I try to ask. If we're going to put a formation in, what are we gaining from this? Are we gaining something from it? You know, are we, like for us, our traditional tight end wing close and split, well, it makes sense to have kind of an overset where you have tight end wing trips because you might gain a lighter box over there. You might strain the defense more. Tight end close trips. Well, that's a, a good, you gain a lot from that because now you're making them defend you different ways. So if you're going to put in a formation, what are you gaining from it? Number two, and a big one for me is what areas, are, what am I vulnerable against? So if I'm going to use a formation, I want to run whatever play I want to run, where am I vulnerable? You know, if I go to this formation, Am I, I'm opening a door somewhere. It's a chess game. So if you're gaining strength somewhere, you're probably losing it somewhere else. You know, if you're going to go to an overset, you're either going to gain strength to the over or they're going to shift and now you can run the counter backside. So how am I going to handle, how are they going to attack me, come at me? If I go spread and I don't have a tight end wing, you know, where am I exposed? Okay. The third one is what rules do the defense have? And, and I can usually predict an alignment based off of that. So I know they're gonna call strength to the tight end and they wanna run this trips roll coverage that I've seen on film. I can kind of predict if I do this, they will do this. And now I can kind of have an idea of, okay, you know, this play I wanna run, looks really good against this or and it doesn't really look so good in that formation. So it's not really, it's not that we can't run that play out of that formation, we probably don't want to. Fourth one, is, and I'm a big fan of running everything you can out of every formation you put in. Now, obviously, some things look better. You know, we're going to run buck sweep. We probably would like a tight end wing surface if possible. We can run it out of other sets. So to me, 
if you're going to put in a formation, you don't want to put in a formation for one play or two plays. You want to be able to run pretty much most of at least your base plays from that formation. Uh, be real careful about putting in a set to run one play because now the defense lines up weird and you don't have an answer and you can't run your other plays out of it. And so you just, in my mind, you just wasted a lot of time doing that. And I, and I'm guilty of doing that. Uh, the fifth one is how predictable am I becoming? And that kind of goes to the fourth one. You know, if we're going to get in these sets, am I only running certain things out of each set and how predictable is that becoming to a defense? You know, that to me if you decide to kind of go down the rabbit hole of multiple formations, you need to make sure you're very much self-scouting yourself. There's a lot of self there, but you want to make sure you're self-scouting yourself to know, hey, every time we've gotten into tight end wing over, we've run strong like 95% of the time. There's nothing wrong with that, but you need to be very aware of that because that's what people are scouting you and looking at. So, if you decide to run a lot of formations, just make sure you're checking that you're not in that 90% range in one formation, or if you are, that you do at least have built-in counters to kind of come back off of that. And I'm going to get in a little more depth as we come back um, on the on the uh, 19th, and I'll go through. I'm going to focus on buck sweep, but I hope to make it apply to any offense where you can take it and put it with if you want to run spread and run inside zone. Maybe you can still get something from it, but it's just using formations to manipulate people and kind of go through that. All right, Coach, I'm going to kick it over to you and let you kind of give a, a little preview of what you're going to do. You're on mute, I think, Coach. Let me share my screen here. Oh, Coach, you got to hit me with a share screen. It says it's disabled. Maybe it'll be on December 19th. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, and, and coach, uh, coach talked about uh, the chess game, and I think that's kind of what I want to dive into when we have a chance to share on the 19th. And uh, again, looking forward to that. I'll just give a little preview here. Uh, what I have on the screen here, and, and coach is going to talk about, which I think will be a nice compliment, how to run one play, that being a buck sweep out of lots of different looks. Uh, what I'm going to talk about a little bit is how to use our different formations and personnel groups in order to try to manipulate a man advantage uh, somewhere along the line, whether that be in the passing game or whether that be in the run game. And so uh, real quick, this is just uh, this is a wing set for us. We call it wing right. And you can see it's a, a tight end wing surface for us. We've got what we would call a, a nose defense. That's a three four with an even safety look. So a three four with a, a quarter shell or something, 10 down in the box. Um, 10 below the red line, which basically is the line. And we're, those of you that know me uh, know that we've kind of adopted some nomenclature from uh, the R4 guys, Coach Maddox, uh, and so forth. So that would be kind of our hard deck line uh, that separates our vertical space from our underneath run space. Uh, and so what we're doing there is we've got 10 down in the box for the run. And if you want to evaluate it a little bit further, uh, let me get my laser going here. Hold on a second, coach. I got a technical glitch here. I immediately went to Top Gun with your hard deck. Yes. Thoughts there. So. And for some reason, I'm going to go. For some reason, I can't go to the next slide. Uh, give me a second here. Stop share. Share screen. There we go. Switch mouse, switch a mouse up here. That'll work. Everyone with me here? Okay, so what we've done here basically again is we've created a, a number count and uh, using, uh, if I use this highlighter here, we're basically gonna draw a line down the middle, okay? And what you'll notice is on the left side of the line, we've got a guard, a tackle, and a running back. So we've got three people on the left, a three-man surface that can block four guys. So that leaves me minus one in our terminology. We're gonna say that the center can block the nose. So therefore there's a, a Mike, a stud, a Sam, a corner, and a free, that's five players. And I've got 
four man surface over here, plus a tailback that could insert. So I'm gonna call that a neutral advantage, okay? So basically I've got five to block five, or I've got three to block four on the, uh, on the weak side. So what we're gonna do through formations then is try to gain an advantage back um, for us. And so in doing that, what we're gonna do is, the other thing I want to notice is anytime for us there's a free safety over the hole and a corner is in run support, what we'd like to do is go to some kind of end over. And so for us then, we're gonna jump out of, and you can do end over lots of ways, right? You can just bring the X all the way over, kind of old school style um, or whatnot. But what we're gonna do is move to our spread stuff in that, and put an A back in the game. We're gonna pull our, our tail back out, put the quarterback back in the gun and move an A back out. And that's gonna instantly move the corner. And what you'll notice is the number count is still the same. I'm minus one on the weak side, and I'm neutral on the strong side, but now I've got a major major leverage advantage over here because they lost the corner. The corner that was the primary force is now out. Well, most defenses, and again, this is kind of the chess game part of it. My prediction here would be a lot of defenses would go ahead and roll their coverage. And so if they roll their coverage, we've still got four strong side blockers and four strong side now run fit defenders. Okay, and again, the center is canceling the nose out, we're saying. So we're neutral on the strong side, but now all of a sudden we're neutral on the weak side. Okay, so we gained a man advantage back on the weak side. And oftentimes neutral is really the best we can get to, but I'll show you ways that we can get to plus one uh, here in a little bit. But now I've got a will, a tackle, and an end over here, and I've got a, a halfback, a tackle, and a quick guard. So I've got three versus three. So through a formation, I've gone from, you know, minus one in neutral in the run game by moving the A back out and then hypothesizing their rotation, I'm back to neutral. And so again, the next move in our shell game would be to move the half back out and we'd sub him with a receiver and we're in an empty set. And now you'll notice we're still minus one on the weak side because we've got a will, a tackle and an elk and I've only got two blockers now, okay? But if I'm minus one, meaning this elk is still in the box. He's still close enough to be considered a box player. Then I'm gaining a man advantage on my empty receiver because he's not covered down on, right? There's a corner that can be run off and I've got this outside space for the, the uh, empty wide receiver to take advantage of. So if they move then their elk, their defensive end out, okay, to cover down on that empty receiver. Now I've got two defenders for two offensive blockers and I'm back to neutral. So now by moving my wide receiver out to the strong side and a wide receiver out to the weak side, I've created neutrality in the gun run game, which means I've got a hat for a hat, which is really good for us. We feel like in the run game. That having been said, the next part of the chess game for us would be to notice there's a, there's a free safety or a Rover for us in the middle of the field. Okay. Who's occupying the vertical space down the middle. Okay, but what he's done is we've got vertical space now because they're still playing eight down. We've got vertical space above that hard deck area that we want to attack. And if we can attack that space, and those of you that, you know, traditional four verticals, if you've got a single high safety, you want to run four verticals. And the, the spot that usually you're going to hit is that weak seam. Okay, that's the, the weak point in the four verticals, traditionally the weak seam. So our idea would be to run a four vertical play. So for us, that scatter right is the formation 93, which is verticals with a Y under. And our quarterback is gonna read the strong side Z on a vertical. The Rover's hopefully gonna push. And we're probably gonna come back and be able to hit the vertical space above the empty in our second progression. Okay, and then we've got an under route as our check down. Another way we might do it, if the Rover's rolling weak and the free is gonna carry strong, is we might run a play we call box, okay? And box for us means we're gonna get a vertical choice route down the middle. That's gonna hold the safety. And then we're running 12 to 14 yard speed digs on the outside. And our quarterback knows if we're working off of one safety, we're gonna go from the choice to the weak alley, not the strong alley, but the weak alley, which means he's gonna rhythm the, rhythm the choice route. He's gonna read the dig on the left. And then he'll, his third progression is rush route using our R4 terminology uh, would be the return route by the receiver. And that would force them then, and I'm gonna 
cut this off here in a second so I don't give away all the secrets. But uh, what you hope then by taking advantage of that vertical space above the hard deck and remind you, I'm still neutral in the run game. So I still have run plays that I like. I can run an inside zone play here and I'm in good shape. I can run a trap solid play where I'm, I'm going to take my guard and off block to the tackle and wrap my uh, and wrap my offensive tackle to the will and then man block the strong side and run a quarterback draw iso type play I can still run buck sweep so I feel good about the neutral run game but by forcing them to cover the vertical space down the field I hopefully might force them back into a too high look and if I can force them into a too high look because they've got to defend the vertical space now I've gained plus one on the strong side I put both safeties above the hard deck I've got a Mike, a stud, and a Sam on a four-man surface, okay? The elk, if I can move him out or not, I'm either neutral or minus or a plus one in space, okay? And so again, by using formations, what I've been able to do is manipulate the number count based on the prediction of what you like to do and how you like to defend two weak and three strong and so forth. And as coach pointed out, I can run the exact same run plays. So really what I'm trying to do is push the space horizontally and then push the space vertically. And if I can get you to honor the space horizontally with quick game and screens, and then I can get you to push the space vertically to honor routes above the hard deck, then I can do what I really want to do, which is run the ball in the middle. And uh, coach, I'll go ahead and stop sharing there. And, and that's kind of hopefully you guys tune in on December 19th and we'll kind of go over it in greater detail and show some film of how it all fits together. But uh, that's try to, that's, we use formations to try to manipulate and gain a man advantage uh, somewhere, whether it's in the run game or the pass game. Well, man, I was, that's impressive coach. Always, always impressive to have you on. And, and guys, like I said, we're going to be back on the 19th of December in the description of this video, I'm going to put uh, where you can go to sign up. We're going to try to limit it. You know, we don't want to have, it'd be a normal clinic where you're just sitting and listen. We want you to be able to get on and ask questions. You know, we're talking and how you, what well, you can have it answered. You know, if you're like me, you're in off season, or if you're like coach, you have a season coming up, you might be able to get something from it. Uh, I know I, I've had coach on before and he's very, very impressive. So I'll put the, uh, the way to sign up in the, in the description, if you guys want to, or feel free to contact either one of us, you know, we're here to help guys. Uh, I think it'll be a good deal again on December 19th.